my desk so I can stand up at it. Cool. All right. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. What are we missing? Jake, he had to run. Did he end up emailing both of us? He had to run his Oh, that's right. His girlfriend down in Syracuse. Yeah. So that's okay. Cool. All right, guys. <clears throat> Ladies. Um, and I can actually say ladies. Yeah. <laughs> it's bad when you have your uh, employee as your boss and your trainee. It's weird. <laughs> we'll get over that somehow. We'll keep talking about it all semester. Um, so, Emma, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Anybody tried to get this funny thing? I tried to look for it, and um, I didn't even find it. Or you we did. We found sort of. of. <laughs> you might as well buy a brand new one, but they don't have any brand new ones. Yeah. You think yeah. you use both of these Oh, Amazon can be sort of No. Um, Amazon can be really good sometimes. I think it's just because it's really probably really few left. No, but so lately Amazon has been actually jacking prices to mm -hmm. cover the prime shipping that they can't afford to do. Mm -hmm. Oh, that didn't even yeah. Yeah. But I really, <laughs> so what you guys don't know about me is I wind up building lots of plastic models in my spare time. It's the way I find a way to relax. Um, and uh, I was looking for some paint to use in my airbrush. And I had to get, I got a gift card for Christmas uh, from Amazon. I said, fine, I'll go use it there. $9.95 for a two ounce bottle of paint. And I went, no. Yeah. Well, and I buy this stuff out of. Spray Gunner, which is a company down in Florida, we'll turn it into a model shop. And it's usually $6.95. It's like, I'll go there because they'll give me free shipping anyways, and it always takes a few more days to get the pizza. $6.44 on sale. And I realized just how much money Amazon puts up on things that are not high profit items or turnover mm -hmm. items for. So yeah. you really want to shop, which is Capital <coughs> One, believe it or not, which I don't use as a credit card. Actually, has a service that will shop around for you for prices. Oh. So, I'll give you, tell you where the lowest price is. Amazon has that. That looks out of print. I know you couldn't do it. But, like, uh, could, you t could you maybe, like, photo scan it and put it as PDF somewhere? You know how long that takes unless I rip the cover off it. You mind the taking a picture scan of Scan the whole book. <laughs> legally, you could do that because that's a print. Um, so the funny <laughs> part is, is legally, years ago, the publisher gave me an electronic version, but I don't think I can transfer it out of the website. Oh, yeah, because yeah, I have an electronic version too, but it's, yeah, you can't. So I can, and I will, make it look easier. Don't buy the book. They won't hold you accountable. I will get the pages that I need turned into a PDF that you can use. Okay. The rest of the stuff, I'm going to give you the notes anyway. So as long as you take good notes or mm -hmm. a follow up. Oh, yeah, I opened up one breath or one note. Um, it'll be in one note. And on top of that, I got all the videos I've done for the last couple classes that are all out there. So I'll give you the link to that too. Cool. I did put them in. Um, I'm a little worried about the college, so I put them out into a uh, YouTube channel for uh, my, my stuff that I do. So I'll give you that link for that. Canned engineering videos or something like that. Mm -hmm. I'm just trying to be really forward thinking that we have all the videos for the entire school put there. <laughs> no one cares. <laughs> uh, I care. But if I care, doesn't make any business. It's a little bit yeah. But I'll give you a video, I'll give you access to the old videos. Plus, I'm going to record these and maybe swap some of them out. Mm -hmm. All right, so don't buy the book. You take care of whatever pages you need out of here. The other thing I was thinking, later in the semester, we do a lot, a lot of stuff with the Federal Highway Administration uh, manuals. So those pages, or some of the references in the back, will come out of that. Don't do anything stupid. Don't waste any money. Cool. Questions? get started. All right, so basic fluid mechanics. Um, all right, so, um, oh, lab today too. Today's Wednesday, right? Yeah. Yep. So we're going to be doing density. So bring a pair of safety glasses. Um, 
It's just alcohol and water, not drinkable alcohol. It's isopropyl. Um, what's that? <laughs> not that you, tight. We got to talk. Um, and we do have some safety glasses in 110 in case yeah. you don't have a pair but on But only because what if you get isopropyl alcohol in the eye? It's going to sting like hell. Always take care of yourself before you do something stupid. And you might as well get used to personal protection because you get on a job site, it's hard at safety vest, safety glasses, steel toed shoes. Um, although no one's ever questioned me about shoes. Mm -hmm. You can usually wear a pair of hiking boots and no one cares. Um, all right, so let's start with some of this stuff. So fluid basics. We have solid, liquid, and vapor, okay? Now, you moving solid around is not a civil engineering task. That's a ground screw task of moving snow around the building, okay? But what do you know about snow? Become, it becomes somebody's headache because when you're designing things, it's still a management problem. You've got to manage where it's going to go. Okay? So don't ever do a civil engineering project while thinking ahead about what the other seasons are going to bring to that job. Okay? Snow isn't really a big deal until it melts from where I'm concerned. Okay? When it melts, what's it do? It turns into a liquid. And liquids like to do what? Go everywhere. That's a good phrase. Without a container, they will spread out to the largest dimension that will contain it. Okay? That is the definition of a liquid, by the way. A liquid is a substance that takes over its shape to the volume that the container is. Okay? Gas is when we go from liquid to a vapor, and vapor just expands limitless to the container size. So a liquid, think about it, we got um, the Yeti bottle. Full or half full? Half full. <laughs> okay. So the liquid inside that Yeti bottle is half that container size. We can measure that. We can actually determine what it is. Vapor expands the whole shape. And the only thing that changes with vapor is pressure. Okay. So we've got to account for pressure. Liquid is usually liquid because it's at atmospheric pressure and we're not doing anything special to it. And you don't have to worry about it. The whole realm of fluid mechanics that gets into vapor becoming stuff we do with steam, where we want it to be liquid, carry as much energy as possible, we put it under high pressure to drive it down as liquid, and then we flash it to vapor and release the heat. Okay? Nothing you should ever worry about. Unless you would work for a railroad company and they're still using steam locomotives. Okay? Yeah, it's a matter of slang. Somebody got me on that one this morning. Who was it? 58. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We had that conversation earlier today. All right. So solid, liquid, vapor. Most of what we're going to do with is in liquid, okay? And what we're really interested in is um, liquid forms to shape of the container but only to a fixed height. All right. Why is that important to know? Well, as I told you the other day, we're going to do open channel flow. So we have water that flows downhill, but it, on a flood season, it could be a higher amount of water in there, and we have to know what the sidewalls of the channel has to be. Okay. Sometimes it'll be a standing um, water tower, and we got to fill it X number of gallons of water up there okay, and distribute it. So that's what we're after there. Okay. Um,
All right. Wait. wait. Love this definition. Mm -hmm. So that's one property of a liquid. Second one, it's kind of what I wrote up above, but I'm going to give it to you in the proper terms here. Molecules that has to do with like energy transfer, right? Because of how hot it's getting. Yep. Yeah. So when we go to a vapor, we actually take that and we break the bonds, which is why that's an indefinite definition. Um, or never. I can't think of anything in civil that you'd ever do that in. Okay. But it is a engineering principle that we do do deal with, um, and this is the best one. It's considered incompressible. Ever try to squeeze water? <laughs> oh, you can't squeeze the dead bottle. Oh, I've got a plastic bottle. Mm -hmm. If you squeeze the water in a plastic bottle, what does it do? Yeah, it would change its pressure, but it also goes up and down. higher in the bottle, but the shape of the bottle changes, right? Crap. Liquid ball of water. Mm -hmm. Unless you're a NASA astronaut sitting up in the space station right now and water will form a nice cohesive sphere, you can't touch it like that. Okay? Because what's it do? Like we said earlier, it runs everywhere. Okay? It's not confined. But it's strong enough in its bonds that it does not break that molecular bond unless you add some more energy to it. Okay? And most of the stuff you're going to do, you're not going to add enough energy to it. Okay? So we're talking, you've got to get a torch out, put some heat under it, and it boil up water. Um, well, actually, take that back. Naturally, it can evaporate off a lake surface, mm -hmm. and that decreases the height of the water, okay? and that gets into the water cycle stuff, which is Dr. Regal's class. But without putting some sort of energy into it, it's not going to do it at all. Okay? So we get the evaporation to occur, sunlight beating down, change the air pressure, and causes it to sublimate, is that the right word? To the vapor? Mm -hmm. And it's gone. And that's all that works. All right. Um, 
conforms to the shape of the container except the top is a horizontal surface. They're the coolest things for making levels with. Okay. You can get a, uh, you can use a garden hose, but you can't see it. Um, I've done water levels where you get a 100 feet of vinyl tubing built full of water, have someone stand over here and hold it at this height, and then go over there and find where the same height is. And when it levels out to this, they reach their natural level. This height will be the same height as that water down there, even though I've gone downhill. Which may mean, bring to this level, I may have to go up 10 feet if I'm going downhill. Okay. So all that surveying stuff you taught you, <laughs> you don't need it. <laughs> Trust me. That is a pain in the ass way to do it. But I do it when you got to go around the building real quick, trying to get the same level here or something over there. It's easy way because it's flexible. But I guarantee that will always reach that height. So it's a matter of you draw a line on the thing and try and line over here and put the line here and walk downhill. And so the water meniscus is at that level and wherever it is on there, you raise the tube up until you get the water meniscus at that same level and you're good. And if you go too low, it runs out. If you go too high, it runs back in the tube. Okay? So when you get just the right Goldilocks spot. Okay. Anyway, um, it is incompressible. And the good thing to that is, it's why it runs everywhere. But you can't squeeze it. And it'll find its natural path. And unless you give it some path to go, it will go where it wants. So our job is to tame water. Good luck on doing that the rest of your life. <laughs> okay. um, the Corps of Engineers has been trying to do it with Mississippi for decades. Um, actually, probably over a century, and it's not going to work. All right, where's my pen going? All right. Um, now, the other thing that we have is it has surface tension. Okay. And it's the difference, be it's surface tension is the molecular bonding. Okay, so surface tension, a couple things we do with this. One, when you're a lake and I got that really thin layer of water on the top, okay, so yeah, there's 50 feet below me, don't worry about that at all, but that top layer, okay, and you got to start thinking what's happening at the very boundary condition of what goes on with that water, okay. It will not evaporate if the surface tension is high enough, okay? And when the surface tension gets low enough, that'll allow molecules to start escaping out, okay? A great example is um, adding dish soap to water, okay? The dish soap breaks the surface tension and allows things to do what it wants to do. But if you leave it there, the molecules want really want to stay together and they will create that tension okay you can break it easily there's lots of ways to do it and okay? of course if we didn't do it that'll cause it i can put it on a chemical end that'll change it um, that's sort of stuff, okay so the cool thing about that one is it becomes is this in its what surface Free surface, sorry. Yeah, I should write better. That's the problem with writing down why I like my... Do you try that ever before? No, I can't write that way. Oh, I prop it up here and then I'm going to write like this and I'm not writing down. And... I can't do that. Yeah, okay. Um, so let's take two test tubes, okay? I can have water do this 
and we might as well introduce you to some symbology here too. Or I can have water do this. Actually, it's not so much water, but I'll explain here in a second. Okay. So I can get surface tension called capillary action. Okay. So if the water surface has surface tension, but the glass has the ability to grab, it will form meniscuses. Okay. And that's the concave or convex shape. Now, water will always form the one on the, my right, your left, okay? So this will always be water, okay? This one will always be mercury. Why? Anybody? Yeah, no, you can't, you don't. I was actually privileged enough as a kid to push mercury around the tight table in the science lab in high school. My dad just played with it in his hands. Yeah, it's <laughs> not, by the way, mercury is a toxic yeah. element, but only if it's vaporized. Okay, you have cuts in your fingers. Cuts in your fingers, yeah, but that's because you know, there's still that little transition. It's that surface tension crap again. Um, but you can push mercury around the table, and it was the coolest thing to do. Um, nowadays, we find a little bit of mercury go, whoa, hey! Hazmat suits. Yeah, <laughs> and literally, no joke. All you need is a special sponge that attracts it, cleans it up, and you throw all that into a place to get incinerated a little bit. You do the same demonstration for but, gallium, though, right? What's that? You do the same similar demonstration for gallium. Though, right? Yeah, you can. Yeah. Gallium's another one of those. But mercury's a whole lot less than gallium, just from its state. Um, so anyways, we use mercury, or we like to use mercury, in manometers to measure things. Because it's dense enough that a slight change in water column will cause this to move ever so finely. Where water, we got to move, whether or not, 23 feet of water to get a significant change in PSI. So here's a little history lesson for you. Okay. The history of engineering is always fun. How did they figure that out? They used to use the capillary action as a means of pumping water out of mines. You put up a tube, it goes up 33 feet to the next level and dumps. They put another tube up, it goes up the next 33 feet and dumps. And they keep doing that. They stack them all the way out this top of the earth. When you're on the ground level, you hope it runs off away from the mine, not back in the hole. Um, so there's another chance to manage your water flow. But literally, it was how to get the water out of the well without using a whole lot of equipment to do it. Nowadays, we put a pump in, we get the right size pipe, we suck it up, we push it out, and we throw it someplace we don't want. Okay? Or someplace where we do no harm. Okay? But we do like to have mercury as a means of measuring fluctuations and pressures, okay. surface tension. All right, that being said, I'm going to tell you what picture that was in the textbook, but that won't matter anymore. <laughs> um, all right, enough on surface tension. Anybody got questions? it does increase the surface tension because the molecules are trying to come back together. And... Closer together. Yep. You guys get that? Maybe I should draw that. Yes? No? Okay. So just for the sake of, if I have a container like so, and we got that much water in it, we'll make that open. Oh, by the way, I was going to say, uh, so when I put the little triangle on top of things, that's open to atmosphere. With me? Okay. And the little lines underneath represent the liquid. That way we don't have to get into coloring and all that sort of stuff. All right. So we got liquid here, but we take the same container and we got our water here and we do this, do, 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 but we put some heat underneath it. Yeah, let's draw a log.
Okay, we add heat. Then we are literally going to start boiling that off the top. Okay, we can get a whole thing of heat transfer, but I'm not going to do that. Paper. But once I cause this to raise in temperature, it actually causes enough expansion, and if the pressure is just right, it will start turning the paper. If the pressure is not just right, it just keeps getting, gathering heat. So the cool thing is, at atmospheric pressure, if I boil it to 212 degrees, it's going to evaporate okay, in terms of gas immediately. But it can cause evaporation to happen in a lake surface just by causing enough wind to go across, a few other things to change things. So there's a lot of variables that affect that transition from liquid to vapor. Cool. It's all about how much energy is in the water and how many molecules are bouncing off each other. But as they cool it down, they get slower and slower and stick together more. As soon as I heat them up, they start bouncing on each other, trying to expand. Same reason a hot air balloon works. And that's the cool mechanics principle too. All right. Um... Oh. The other thing with, um, doo -doo. what's the word I'm looking for? Capillary action. We haven't talked about that yet. Um, capillary action is that whisking of that fluid up the sides of the container. Um, we don't use them very often anymore, but some of you may have some old um, white gas lanterns mm -hmm. to light things. You do. Of course you do. <laughs> um, but they use a wick. Wick, it's capillary reaction up the tube. Oh, and there's a great experiment. How is it? A piece of pH paper in a solution of beet juice. And if you let it sit there over the next 24 hours, it will seep up the paper. How's it going up the paper? Water going up defies gravity. Okay. It's capillary action. So the real thing with capillary action, a test tube is too big. Okay? But if I took um, one of the pipettes that we use around the lab here, and I just let it sit there, eventually the molecules will work their way up because the water pressure outside is pushing down to shove it up. Okay? It'll stay up there, so we use that to our advantage. All I'm going to say about capillary action, <laughs> other than it's a cool, cool phenomena. Um, all right, thin tubes, mercury, water, vapor. Okay, so back up here. When I do, um, I guess I do a new picture. If I got a surface and I got a manometer in here, and let's do. I do a glass container. And I got liquid here. I can have water increase up the manometer by some distance. And we're going to call that delta, whatever. Right now I'm going to call it. Um, I don't know, 0 0.025 inches, okay? But I can change the pressure on that and I can get it to go higher up the tube, okay? So if I take to put the pressure on the outside and run it up, it will go up, okay? By the way, I should probably close the top of that. It's too short of a picture. Um, like so, okay. Um, that. You get rid of the triangle then? You have a shape like that. Well, I have air up in there. So, yeah, it's not open the atmosphere in that case, but there is a gaseous substance up there. Okay. But as I push down here, that pressure over there is different. We're going to talk about manometers ever so briefly. Um, if you're a mechanical, you spend a lot of time with a manometer. You guys. Biggest thing you use a manometer for is a stilling well, and after that, no one cares. Okay. Well, take that back. 
we're going to spend some time in the lab screwing with manometers because they're so much fun to play with. It's, it's the easiest way to calibrate. Okay. All right, so anyways, that's the story behind that. Why did it just go up to the water level in the container? Because the air pressure exploding. here is driving down here. So this is... Um, because that's the manometer's closed. Yeah, so pressure here is less than one. Pressure here is one or greater. Okay. Okay, so you do have to have a pressure change to get that yeah. to work. Yeah. But you can create this. People have been doing this for years. Um, yeah. What drives the pressure change in the system? So if you take a manometer or a um, test tube and have it in the air like this, anyway, upside down, whatever, it's going to fill with air. But if I take it and I submerge it into the water, it's at the same pressure inside the tube as the air is today. But tomorrow, the air pressure mm -hmm. will change. So it will drive it down. So that's one way to do it. So natural pressure changes in the atmosphere. Will it always drive it down? Drive it down. Well, it'll drive it down this way. If it's high pressure, it'll let up. If it's low pressure. Is that how a diving bell works? No, diving bells are a whole other dilemma. We can talk about that when we deal with pressures and depths and that sort of stuff. But close, but no, I'm not the same. Okay. Um, now, with... That was, if they both started out equal, the water is at the surface mm -hmm. level of the dish it's sitting in. Mm -hmm. But as the atmospheric pressure changes day to day, okay, it will go up and down that too. Okay. Fair enough? Mm -hmm. Now we could have some real fun, but I'll just other than a slight tease here. Um, I know when we have a high pressure system and we have a low pressure system based on what type of clouds are in the air. So if you pay real close attention to meteorology, you can actually figure out whether you've got a high pressure system in here or a low pressure system. So it's going to be a low pressure system when I see high cirrus clouds, the little wispy things. Okay? They're the precursors to the cold front coming. A cold front is associated with low pressure systems. If I get a major Thunder clouds, so the cumulus nimbus, and they form up and they have these great big ample tops on them. Then I got a high pressure system coming in because I'm going to get a whole lot of rain at once because I got a cold front and a warm front colliding together that actually changes pressure. Okay. Then you can also look at the wind patterns. Okay. High for high pressure systems rotate anti cyclone, which is Counterclockwise, no, counterclockwise. Low pressures operate cyclonic. Clockwise is cyclonic, anti clockwise, anti cyclone is counterclockwise. Okay. Which is why the cyclone is called a cyclone for hurricanes, because they rotate clockwise and do all kinds of damage. High winds and that sort of stuff. Cool. All right, anyways, stay out of meteorology for a while. Because I'm not even sure I got that right. <laughs> um, but it's one of those things. Okay, so let's deal with some symbols that we got to deal with. So I used to tell students, don't fear the Greek. Um, because all we do is like to come up with things. It's better than writing angle all the time. Okay, so we will have alpha, and that is usually used for angle. Okay, we have beta, and that one can be used for angles. We got Epsilon, and that one is for strain, which you've all seen someplace in your life around here. We got gamma, and that's specific weight.
We'll have a new one later on too, and you've probably done it if you've had concrete unit weight. Mm -hmm. Okay, so keep that in mind too. We'll play with that one, um, but we don't have a Gant or a Greek letter for that one. Mu looks like a big U. Um, actually, I'm going to do that just a little better. So technically, it's more like this. And that one is then we have new We have row. It's kind of like a P, but it's not quite a P. It's it's, a, it's that curl. Yeah, like a long E that's been stretched, the bottom stretched out. Yeah, I like that one. Mine's slightly different. Yeah, same thing. Depends on the Greek. Um, yeah, so actually you could do that. Um, kind of like that, maybe. Mm -hmm. All right, this one you've seen before. Sigma. And this is normal stress. Tau. And that one is shear stress. Okay. Delta. And then we have Okay. So what's that? Because one's the uppercase mm -hmm. Greek and the other's the lowercase mm -hmm. Greek. So all, all things in this list, delta and sigma with the big squiggly thing is the only uppercase letters that we use typically. Okay. Now, just decided not so, to. You know the English language has 26 letters. Yeah. The Greeks only have 21, which really makes their wording really fun if you try to read it in Greek. Mm -hmm. um, 21, something like that. Yeah, I had to memorize um, it in college. Yeah, I did too, and I gave up. Who cares? Oh. Literally. <laughs> I have a hard enough time trying to figure out. Are you using alpha for angle or beta for angle? Or, you know, the other one that they wind up using for angle is omega. And a line through it. It's like, that's lowercase omega. Capital omega is a horseshoe. <laughs> like, eh, whatever. Fine, fine. The real trick yeah. behind this, what I like about giving you this list is if I write something, you'll kind of know what I'm writing it for, not just something crazy, okay? Because it can be confusing as all could be out there. All right, how are we doing on time? Cool. Um, all right, let's talk about specific weight. And the Greek letter for specific weight is gamma. And gamma is defined as the 
weight over volume. Is that big enough for you guys to see? I don't need to make you blind. It's funny, there's always somebody who used to sit here. There's no one there. And you're the only one that's the center table. What the hell did you do to yourself? You need to pick a side, right? All right, so <laughs> let me tell you a small story here so you don't do this. On my yeah, principles and practice exam for my license, I took it twice because it's 3 o'clock in the afternoon, I was brain dead. <laughs> and I opened up a book and went, oh yeah, that's for Millie's equation. And I picked the metric one. And I had the specific weight of water divided by the specific weight of water, and I screwed up 10 problems in a row. <laughs> but of course, 20 minutes later, and I realized the mistake. It's like, oh crap, I ain't gonna finish this. I gotta go. So I kept working on problems, figuring out, okay, it's a percentage of whatever number. Well, we had 180 questions, you guys don't have that. Um, but I would get to a point that I would be by sheer number of pass and missed it by one stinking point. I took it again. The next time, I did not make that mistake. So. The specific weight of water is 62.4 pounds, and you will remember that. Okay? You will never pick up the metric equation, because the metric equation likes to deal with the gravity issues, mm -hmm. and we're not dealing with that. Okay. All right. Um, so weight can be in um, unit-wise here, so we can be in pounds, newtons. The volume can be in cubic feet, and it can be in meters cubed. I like, for what you guys are doing, we stick primarily to the English system, but there are times where the metric system makes more sense. Um, but when we're dealing with stuff for highways, you're always going to find things in cubic feet per minute. All right. Um, Okay, so civil is the unit weight. So if you hear specific weight or unit weight, same thing. Okay, so it's the unit of one. What's the units on one? Well, one's one. So, same thing here. Specific weight is the unit weight because there's one unit of the stuff that we're trying to measure. With me? Trust me, you guys are the only ones that get that privilege. Mechanicals, when we teach this stuff to them, it's like, you will call it specific weight and nothing else. And then we really confuse them. It's like, what density? Come up. <laughs> All right. Density. Okay. All right, now, this is where I think the world gets really stupid and why the English system is the dumbest system to measure anything in, okay? So, mass is in slugs, <laughs> and then metric is in kilograms, okay? And we get volume still in... Uh, cubic feet and meters cubed, okay? You know what a slug is? Absolutely not. <laughs> so it's the measure of something divided by gravity, and when you get all done, it's like you frog around with gravity just to find out that pound is a pound, okay? Now, I didn't do that up in the specific weight 
or the unit weight. But where I put LB, that should be LBF. Okay, so pounds force. Are you with me? And density, slugs actually get converted to pounds mass. Okay? Now, if you play in the world of physics, it's going to be tough your job well. They've explained kilograms to you. That's the mass of the object. A one kilogram mass here is one kilogram here and one kilogram on the moon. Okay? One kilogram measured on Earth with gravity, so kilograms over, or kilograms, mass over uh, acceleration, or mass, no, mass times acceleration, gives you a force, right? F equals m times a. So the acceleration of gravity, so we substitute the a for a g, call it done, we get it, a force. So that's a new, okay? With me so far? In the English system, we got to go into slugs to get it to mass, to pounds mass, to get it to pounds force. We multiply it times gravity, but we take the gravity back up, which is why I screwed up 10 problems on the engineering exam. You with me? So I'm warning you, don't do that. Now, the better part is, just remember this, okay? Um, think about it in terms of what density is. It just wants to be the mass of the object. Mass is mass, no matter where you are on the internet. Okay. Um, oh, you did this. Uh, Dr. Regal put me on to, um, what was that space uh, book? Um, oh. Um. Anyway, scientists go to space looking for this alien. There's this um, space amoeba basically eating the sun. Okay? But it's eating every sun on the planet. What the hell is that? I know, not the, Martian. the Martian. Same um, author. But anyways, so anyways, he's up there, and the alien sends him a disc of stuff from the other side. He's trying to figure out what it is. No communi common communication. Science is the one commonality in the entire universe. You know? Project Hail Mary. Project Hail Mary. Such a good book. You gotta read, read it. it. You gotta read it's it. amazing. I recommend it by two faculty. Enjoy. Um, but anyways, <laughs> he's trying to figure out what this is. Now, this alien is, um, I don't know, ox, six arms, something like that, would breathe some strange atmosphere, so they can't be in the same space. Here. So they build a little exchange to send it out to you. And my kids, it's just going to figure out what is this stuff they just gave me? So you can start a language. Density is density. Every known material in the universe is the same. He sent them a ball of iron, I think it was, wasn't yeah, it? I think so. And it was a little ball. How do you measure the density? We're going to do today in lab. Okay. So this is leading into that, but it wasn't quite. Cool. <laughs> so I take it and I can do a couple things with it. So I can do it as he did a centrifugal experiment mm -hmm. to figure out what it was, equaling the amount of water that would be on the other side, and spinning it until the water stayed in its perfect orbit with the object in the other bucket staying in the same orbit, okay, but opposite places. You basically balance the scale because you're in space. Scales don't work. Okay? So, but velocity does. So now we have momentum. It gives us the velocity. We can take the mass because mass times velocity is our momentum. Because once we know all that, then he figures out it's iron. He now has a letter F. And he can start doing that with different elements. So, literally, math and science are the key to everything. And you seriously have to read that book. Like yeah. my daughters love the book, even. My, my father, Oh, everybody. Okay. Um, that's a good place to stop. Um, we will do some things today in lab. I'll explain a few more things about this, but we'll stop there. We talked too much today. I did the same thing. It was Owen's fault. He got me off on all these tangents in the <laughs> What's it?